My research centers on heart failure and predominantly um, a form of heart failure called heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, where the gross squeezing function of the heart is relatively preserved, uh, but the symptoms of breathlessness and fatigue are just as bad as all other types of heart failure. Um, it affects about 3 million Americans and there's no proven treatment. So we're really working hard to try to better understand the pathophysiology in order to design better treatments. I became interested in that uh, when I was really way back uh, to fellowship or even before that during my training process when I became very fascinated by the processes underlying relaxation of the heart and how the heart um, is able to fill with blood to large volume without increases in stiffness and how that becomes abnormal in these patients. Well, right now for these people, um, really we're limited to con control of blood pressure and diuretics if they've got fluid overload and treatment of their other comorbid conditions, which are very common, diabetes, COPD. Um, we're looking for more targeted treatments, and, and that's really the, the focus right now. We're pursuing um, um, one line in particular in a couple of different studies. Um, this molecule, inorganic nitrite, NO2, uh, there's a lot of evidence that um, people with HEFPEF have abnormalities in nitric oxide availability and this underlies many of the problems. So nitrite can be converted into nitric oxide in the tissues via a reduction reaction and uh, this is facilitated when there's acidosis and hypoxia in the tissue which happens during exercise. So it, it can function as sort of a magic bullet that will deliver nitric oxide at the time you need it the most when you're physically active, maybe without having as many untoward effects at rest. Um, so we're testing this in, in two trials, one um, uh, with just patients with HEFPEF in a, in a crossover trial that's called the uh, INDI HF trial. Um, and, and then another trial we're giving it versus placebo in an inhaled form um, along with cardiac rehab, which we also know helps for people with HEFPEF. The idea being that uh, by helping the heart and reduce those pressures in the heart, you can get more benefit from, from training. So. Uh, that's what I have the most enthusiasm for right now is, is, is future options. Yesterday I spoke in the, um, the fundamentals of hemodynamics, which is always a fun topic. Um, you know, this is really for a lot of us in cardiology, the reason that we got interested, just the principles that govern um, pressure, flow, resistance um, in the cardiovascular system and how we can apply that to the care of heart failure patients. Um, my talk in that session was specifically focused on exercise testing in the cath lab. Um, so we know that exertional breathlessness is a very, very common complaint. Uh, we see it, all doctors see it, especially in family practice and general clinics. And um, when the ejection fraction is low, it's an easy diagnosis. It's heart failure with reduced EF. But if the ejection fraction is normal, you don't know if it's just somebody who's deconditioned or obese or they have pulmonary disease or if they have HEFPEF. Um, so by putting catheters in to measure the heart pressures and the pressures in the, in the lungs and the pulmonary vasculature, um, we are able at rest and then during exercise, this really provides the gold standard to identify or refute that diagnosis rather than um, struggling with a lot of other diagnostic tests that are sort of equivocal. So it's a very useful um, method. It allows us to learn about the heart, the pulmonary vasculature, even the periphery, the skeletal muscles. So um, really a definitive test to establish what's going on with patients. Um, and that was the subject of my talk. Um, well, I, I think that that's pretty well established right now that that's um, our approach. I think right now the, the issue is just getting people to um, understand its role and to um, utilize it. Uh, we're looking for less invasive ways to make the diagnosis. Obviously, if we could do it without having to you know, enter the, the body and put catheters in the heart, that would be good. There is some hope that we can do that to some extent with echocardiography, with exercise. Um, and we have some preliminary data that that might, that might have a role. Um, it's not perfect, it's not as good obviously as the gold standard and, and we will still need to do 
invasive catheterization in a number of patients, uh, but really finding out other non-invasive ways where we could stop short, uh, but still deliver quality care and, and have you know, a good level of certainty about the diagnosis is the key. Um, <laughs> the sooner the better. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I think that the role is, is pretty much established right now for invasive exercise testing. And um, with further studies as they come out, we can refine the role of how we can use non-invasive tests to lead up to that so we can reserve that gold standard test for the people that really need it. Um, and, and getting people to um, really just be aware of it. Um, cardiologists even, but also in, across all, you know, um, branches of, of internal medicine practice and family practice. Um, it's, a, it's a really powerful test.